Conrad Lorenz developed a model that brings together the main ideas of classical ethology to explain animal motivation. It should be emphasised that this is a model. It doesn't pretend to be an accurate picture of structures that actually exist within the brain. Instead, it's a way of visualising how various hypothetical systems work together to organise an animal's response to its internal and external environment. This animation is based on the type of static diagram that you'll find in many textbooks and it's used to explain Lorenz's model of motivation. It's called a hydraulic model because it views motivation as a liquid whose accumulation and discharge influences behaviour. Consequently, some people call it Lorenz's water closet. Fixed action patterns are relatively stereotyped behaviours. They seem to run like clockwork. They are exhibited by all members of a species under appropriate conditions. Fixed action patterns are normally seen when an animal in an appropriate motivational state is exposed to an appropriate external stimulus. This external stimulus is called a releaser or sign stimulus by ethologists. In this model, male fish exhibit three different fixed action patterns. This collection of fixed action patterns is called an ethogram. One of your tasks will be to identify the three fixed action patterns which make up the ethogram of male behaviour in this simulation. However, this task is not straightforward because the actual fixed action pattern exhibited by the male depends upon the readiness of the male to mate, his internal motivation, and the attractiveness of the female, her releaser value. In the simulation, the colour of the male's body reflects his internal motivation. Later on, you can explore the simulation to determine which male body colour denotes high motivation, which body colour denotes medium motivation, and finally which body colour denotes low motivation. In the simulation, the behaviour and size of the female represents her release of value. The simulation allows you to determine which female behaviour acts as a weak releaser, which female behaviour acts as a medium releaser, and, finally, which female behaviour acts as a strong releaser for male courtship behaviour. The first thing to do is to distinguish between male and female fish in the simulation. This is relatively easy. There's a school of male fish on the left-hand side of the screen. The female fish is not visible until the model is activated by clicking on one of the triangles or cones in the simulation. They're coloured green, orange and purple. The coloured cones, the green, orange and purple cones, represent sign stimuli or releases. The cones differ in size and colour to reflect their relative strength. In this model, there are three releases of increasing potency. Weak, coloured green, medium, coloured orange, and strong, coloured purple. When one of these cones is activated, several things happen in the model. The cone is placed onto the scale pan. The behaviour of the female fish depends on which cone has been selected. These female behaviours include swimming forward, swivelling her body from side to side, and swivelling her body up and down. There are several things that you can explore in this simulation. First of all, focus on the behaviour of male fish when they encounter females that differ in attractiveness. 
I think you'll find it easier to explore the reactions of the fish by starting with the blue fish and discovering how he reacts to each of the female releases stimuli. Then observe and record the behaviour of the red and yellow males. And finally, rank order the motivation of the various males. Remember that the more motivated an animal is, the more likely he is to respond to a relatively weak stimulus. In Lorenz's model, motivational energy is called action-specific energy. It's represented by the accumulation of water in the blue reservoir. The reservoir is filled by a tap. When the model is activated, the weight of the comb causes the valve to open. Water, or action-specific energy, is released from the reservoir. Water enters a sloping trough and flows from pipes, representing fixed action patterns, in the trough floor. Lorentz introduced the term innate releasing mechanism to describe a central, in other words, some located somewhere in the brain, a central mechanism that handled the link between external stimulus, internal motivation and behavioural output. The scale pan, pulley, trough and outflow pipes in this model correspond to the innate releasing mechanism. If you look closely you can see that the smallest releaser causes water to flow from one pipe, whereas all three pipes are, f are filled when the strongest sign stimulus is activated. An important feature of the model is that after an animal has engaged in a particular fixed action pattern, there's a period of time when they are less likely to respond even if the same stimulus is presented again. This is called behavioural quiescence or behavioural quietness. This occurs because the reservoir has been drained of action specific energy. In the simulation this is represented by having the cones, representing sign stimuli, disappear as the reservoir is being refilled with water. According to Lorenz's theory, the type of fixed action pattern exhibited by an animal is a function of the amount of accumulated action-specific energy, that's its internal motivational state, and the sign stimuli, or releaser value, that's the external stimulation, to which the animal is exposed. Behrens and his colleagues have provided an elegant demonstration of this principle which is shown in this slide. The green line shows male posturing behaviour. A male with low action specific energy will only exhibit this behaviour if he is presented with a relatively large female. In contrast, a male with high specific energy will posture in the presence of a small female. 
Next, examine the curve for sigmoid behaviour. A male with high action-specific energy will exhibit this particular behaviour to a female of intermediate size, whereas a male with low action-specific energy requires a very large female to release this behaviour. You should notice how internal state of the male and external stimulation provided by the female have been operationally defined in this experiment and related to the model discussed earlier. Here is an imaginary experiment that may help you understand the relationship between external sign stimuli, accumulating action specific energy and behaviour. In this diagram the various foods represent sign stimuli of increasing attractiveness. Hours since your last meal represent increasing action-specific energy to eat. The blue line on the graph shows what would trigger eating at different amounts of hunger. The person in this picture would eat ice cream even if it was presented shortly after a meal but wouldn't eat any of the other foods. But if 10 hours had passed since their last meal they would eat a beef burger if it was the only food available. Do humans exhibit fixed action patterns? Two ethologists film people across a wide range of cultures with a right-angled reflex lens camera. In other words, the subjects didn't realize that they were being filmed because the camera lens did not appear to be pointing at them. But these ethologists have identified and recorded on film several fixed action patterns or human universals. For example, smiling, and this example, which is the eyebrow flash. These are pictures of a Himba woman from Nim Namibia in southwest Africa. She shows a rapid brow raising between the second and third still images, which coincides with raising her eyelids. Because all the cultures that were examined showed this behavior, the ethologists concluded that it was a human universal or fixed action pattern. I hope you found this YouTube video useful. You can find out more about this topic and a wide range of other material to support undergraduate students studying psychology, evolutionary psychology and behavioral neuroscience on the Salmon website. The website address is shown on this slide.